I'm not really great at this. But I'm going to do it anyway because, you know, you got to get better at stuff. So I want to talk about uh, fake forces in a rotating reference frame. We already know that if you have uh, a reference frame that's at rest, then we can write Newton's second law, and it looks like this. F net is M. I'm going to write this as R O double dot. Where I'm using the O notation for my stationary reference frame. So the net force is mass times acceleration. I mean, we've done that. But it doesn't work if the reference frame is accelerating. And so today we're just going to look at how do you deal with a rotating reference frame. So here I have my x0, y0. It's, it's three-dimensional, but I'm not showing that. And then I have a rotating reference frame x, y. Uh, that's the one I care about. That's why I'm calling it X and Y because, you know, you care if you care about the things, you don't give them extra stuff, right? So I don't give it a little label. So I'm calling this one just the frame I want, X and Y. But it's rotating. And so it has some angular velocity omega vector. Now, if I have a vector in that reference frame, how do I find it? Well, I don't care about finding the vector. I care about finding the derivatives of the vector. So I'm not going to derive this because the derivation for this isn't super great. Well, I don't, I don't like it. So I'm judging it. I apologize. So it looks like this. I can say the derivative of the vector a with respect to time in the, uh, in the SO frame. So that's, I'm going to call this SO. This is SO and this is S. But I'll just leave off the S because it's, it's the one we want. It's equal to the derivative of A in the normal in the rotating frame, which I'll just call dA dt. But I have to add omega cross A. So you have to add that term in. And so omega tells you how that ro frame is ro rotating. It's kind of a big deal. But what I want to do is to show how to use this for Newton's second law. So in this, I have, I know that I, if I want to find Newton's second law, I have to take the derivative. This is a double dot notation. This is a derivative of, of, of it twice. So what I want is to say F net is D, the second derivative of R with respect to T. I want to do, oh, T. I want to do that in the rotating frame, but I have to deal with this. So what I'm going to have to do is take the derivative of that vector twice. So let's do that. So I want to find that, let's say, d, the second derivative of r with respect to t, is going to be equal to that operator twice. So I can write this as the second derivative, I'm, so, I'm sorry, the derivative with respect to time plus omega cross and then operate that again, the derivative with respect to time plus omega cross r. And this is r, the rotating frame, right? Okay. So I can treat this just like a product and, you know, do this operating on that times that, this operating on that times that, and so forth. So let's do that. So let's just multiply this out. So I get this operated on this operated on that. So that's going to be the second derivative of the vector r with respect to t. That's not too hard. Now I'm going to get this operated on this. So now I have omega cross r and I have to take the derivative. So I'll put plus the derivative with respect to time of, I'm oh, sorry, I messed up that omega, omega cross r. And we've got to fix that in a little bit. Now I'm going to do this one. So I have plus omega cross and the derivative of r dr dt. And then I have this one plus, I'm sorry, I did this, and then I did this, this. So now I'm going to take the uh, omega cross r and then take the, the omega cross it. Omega cross omega cross r. And you have to do this first, right? Because if I don't, if I do omega cross omega, I get zero because those are in the same direction. So the cross product of those two vectors would be zero. So you have to do this one first and then take the cross product again. Okay, so that's a cross. Everything's good except for this. I have to take the derivative of this term. So I have two terms in here. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, use the product rule. So I'm going to get, write this one down, the second derivative of r 
with respect to time. Plus, now I'm going to get the derivative of omega cross r. So I'm going to say plus the derivative of omega cross r. And then I have to take the d plus the derivative of uh, omega cross the derivative of r. I mean, the, the plus omega cross the derivative of r. So it's going to be omega cross dr dt. And then I have this one plus omega cross dr dt. And then I have this one plus omega cross omega cross r. So right here you can see that I have two of these terms. So I can combine them together. Now, let's assume this, I'll leave that term in there for right now. Okay, so I get this. The second derivative, I'm going to write, actually I'm going to write this differently. The second derivative of r is r double dot plus, let's write this as omega dot cross r plus 2 omega cross r dot plus omega cross omega cross r. And this is equal to r0 double dot, right? Because that's the derivative in the reference frame. I get all that extra stuff because it's rotating. If I multiply everything by a mass, 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 you got to say it every time, mass, mass, then mr0 double dot is the total real force. So this is going to be f real. I'll put f real. And this is going to be what we want, right? We want mass times acceleration. So what I want to do is to subtract all this from both sides. So let's not put, let's just put this like this. So I get m r double dot is going to be equal to f real, the real forces on the object, minus m omega dot cross r, minus 2 m omega cross r dot, plus m omega cross omega cross r. So we did it. So this is Newton's second law in a rotating frame. So if I have an object in the rotating frame and I want to find this acceleration, I have to include the real forces. This is a force um, that depends on omega dot. So if, the, if it's a constant omega, then this is zero. Zero vector, technically. Because if omega is constant, the derivative is, is zero. So this term would go away. So a lot of times you won't see this term in there uh, because we usually we deal with constant rotation frames, and that's fine. This term right here is a term that depends on the angular velocity and the velocity of the particle in the reference frame. R dot is the velocity in the reference frame. This is the Coriolis force. And then this force, if you look at it just in terms of scalar, it depends on the distance from the center, r, and then the omega twice. So you get act, if you did the scalar version of this, it's m omega squared. That's the centrifugal force. Okay. So there you go. Forces in a rotating frame. But wait, let's do another version of this to kind of show that it actually works. Let's suppose that I have a reference frame, x0, y0, and then I have a rotating frame, uh, and it's currently at some angle theta, but theta is not constant. And this is x, and this is y. And I want to find some vector in here, a. So I can write a as the vector uh, a, and it's only in two dimensions. And omega, it is rotating, so omega we can write as the vector uh, zero. I'm trying to say which frames I want. It doesn't really matter. It's gonna be in the z direction, so it's gonna be zero, is it x or x zero? It's both, really. Um, let's put x hat plus zero, y hat plus omega, z hat. So that, that's my angular velocity. We'll use that in a little bit. 
So I can write this as a x x hat plus a y y hat. Now I want to take the derivative. So let's take the derivative of this. d a d t is going to be equal to a x dot, that's the derivative with respect to time, x hat plus a y dot y hat. But, but, these are with respect to the x y frame, the s frame. The s zero frame doesn't rotate, but the s frame does. So that means that x hat is this way. I'll write it right here, x hat. y hat is like that. And as theta changes, x hat changes and y hat changes. So in fact, uh, I, sh I have to write these other terms in here too. ax, the derivative of x hat with respect to time, plus ay, the derivative of y hat with respect to time. They're not constant. I have to take the derivatives. So now we can do a little cheat because if I want to take the derivatives of, of x hat and y hat, I can get them in terms of x0 and y0 hat, which are constant. So let's just draw a picture right here. I'm going to say this is x hat. This is x0 hat. And this is going to be y hat. And this is y0 hat. And this is the angle theta. So I can write x hat as this. And we're going to do this by inspection. There's a better way to do it. But how much does it go in the x direction is this side. How much does it go in the y direction? The, the state and the stationary frame is that. So this is just going to be cosine theta x0 hat plus sine theta y0 hat. And I can take the derivative of this because x0 and y0 are constant. Now let's do the same thing for y hat. y hat is going to be equal to, now I have this. So the y component, if you'll notice, that's the angle theta, that's theta also. So this is going to be the opposite sign, but it's in the negative direction. So this is negative sine of theta x0 hat hat plus cosine, yeah, cosine theta times y0 hat. So now, now I have x hat and y hat in terms of x0 hat and y0 hat, I can take the derivative. Let's take the derivative of x hat. Derivative of x hat with respect to time is going to be equal to the derivative of cosine theta, which is negative sine theta. But I also have to take the derivative of the inside. The derivative of theta is theta dot. So I get negative theta dot sine theta x0 hat. And I don't take the derivative of x0 hat because it's constant. And if I take the derivative of sine theta, I get plus theta dot cosine theta y0 hat. If I factor out this theta dot, I get theta dot times negative sine theta x0 hat plus cosine theta y0 hat. And you'll notice right here, that's y hat. So this is equal to theta dot y hat. Now let's take the derivative of y hat, dy hat dt. It's going to be equal to uh, the derivative of sine theta is cosine theta, so I get negative theta dot cosine theta x0 hat minus sine theta dot sine theta y0 hat. So if I factor out a negative theta dot, then I get negative theta dot times Cosine theta x hat, sine theta y hat, that's just x hat. So I took the derivative. Okay. Now let's just check. I want to check if see if this agrees with our expression. So, so far, I'm going to, let me rewrite this whole thing. So dA dt is going to be this ax dot x hat plus a y dot, that's a y, y dot plus a x. And then if I take the derivative of x hat, I get, I get theta dot. So I get theta dot times y hat. That's a plus. 
my, and then I take the derivative, I get minus a y times the derivative of y with respect to time, which is negative theta x hat. I'll put the negative there. Theta dot x hat. Okay. So I want to show that this is the same as dA dt equals uh, in the in the O frame, S O frame, is equal to uh, A dot, let's write this, dA dt plus omega cross A. So we already have that part right there. I have the dA dt, it's right there. I just have to show that this is omega cross A. So let's write omega as the vector uh, the, I'm going to write a 0 x hat plus 0 y hat plus omega z hat. And then a is the vector a x x hat plus a y y hat plus 0 z hat. Now I can do the cross product. Omega cross a is going to be the determinant of the matrix x hat, y hat, z hat, and then I put my omega, which is 0, 0, omega, and then I have ax, ay, az. So now when I expand this, I get x hat times 0 times az minus omega times ay. I think that should be plus, but that's fine. Uh, and then I get plus y hat. For y hat, remember you do it the backwards, so I'm going to get omega ax times y hat. And then for the z, I get 0 times 0 plus 0 times 0. So this gives me negative omega ay x hat plus omega ax y hat. Oh, that, I do have that up there. Oh. <laughs> okay, and so theta dot is omega, right? Theta dot tells you how the angle changes with time, which is omega. So you see this term right here is that term right there. It's the same thing. So what I've done is shown that in two dimensions this does work. So the, the derivation for that principle is more important. Um, but I've shown that at least in two dimensions, it's the same thing. Um, so you can, you can use it now. Well, you could use it before. Um, and then, of course, this is the real point here, finding the uh, acceleration in the rotating frame.